Hello. Before we get started with the actual content, I've got two things to say, but don't worry, it's not from like a sponsor or anything. The first thing is that I know that you really want the core content, the coaching, the hitting, the routines, the technical swing, all of those things. And I really want to give you those things. But my court has been closed since March hasn't even opened for like a little bit and then closed for a second part. It's been completely closed. In addition, my hip recovery has not been very good. So I can't even walk very far without pain. So actually getting on court and hitting the ball seems even further away. But I promise to do that as soon as I can, I do. And the second thing that I want to talk about is this, which is the Squash Player Magazine, oh, out of the light there, um, which is an incredibly good resource, and I highly recommend that you at least have a look at the website and consider subscribing. There's some great articles in there, and who knows, you might even find something from me in there. You, you know, you never know. I mean, here he is, he says, trying to, you know, just by accident flip along oh look there's my page okay so so anyway not just because i'm in it because you know that's that's not so important but there are really some great uh, articles in here and i'm sure that every uh Everybody who watches my videos would enjoy this. As long as your level of English is fairly good, you should be able to read this. You can get a digital subscription and you can get a, uh, a print subscription, which is what this is. But I'm not sponsored by those people to tell you that. I just think it's a great magazine and I think that you should consider subscribing. So let's talk about the real content of this video. The title is Three Squash Equipment Hacks for Your Consideration. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about balls, bags, and t-shirts. So, you know, without further ado, let's get started. This hack is to do with your squash balls. Now, depending on where you play and the type of court you play, you might find that the ball gets this sheen. It's like some of the paint, it might be some of the plaster, um, but it, basically what will happen is the ball will lose its mat. I don't have any, you know, okay, there's a, there's a brand new ball here. Okay, um, it will lose its mat finish. Now, I'll obviously do a close up here. Um, and what that means is that when the ball hits the floor, it doesn't bounce properly, it almost skids. And when it gets really bad, it's almost as if there's water on the floor and the ball goes. What can you do? Well, you can throw them away, of course you can, which is a bit of a waste. Now, you can buy a machine which is essentially like scraping the ball. Now, I haven't used one of those machines and they might be absolutely fantastic, but I think that they're about 30 euros. 30 euros sounds a lot of money for a regular player. Maybe for a coach, maybe for a club, they could buy one and then everybody could use it. Great. And I have heard of people who use sandpaper. You've got to find the right, you know, uh, grade of sandpaper. I think it's supposed to be quite fine and you sort of spend a few minutes. But I'm too lazy for that. I mean, I'm too lazy. So what do you do? You put them in the washing machine. When I used to work for Dunlop Slazenger, the final process of these balls was putting them in a washing machine. Now, it's a long time ago, and I can't remember whether they put any detergent in, I'll be honest. They used to put about 100 balls in a washing machine, and the abrasion between the balls, I think, was enough. Don't even know whether they put water in there. Can't tell you, I'll be honest. Totally can't tell you. But what I do is I put them in with my normal wash at 30 degrees with my squash kit or just regular kit. I've never put them higher. Don't really know oops, Don't really know the effect of that. Maybe it would damage the ball. But at 30 degrees, it hasn't damaged the ball. And what happens is the ball comes out looking brand new. It's not brand new, but it looks brand new. It bounces properly. So maybe the process of putting it in the washing machine does damage it and maybe it doesn't last as long afterwards and maybe the sandpaper is a better option but if you're a little bit uh, i'm not going to say lazy i'm going to say busy i'm just too busy to do this with my squash balls try it 
use different temperatures to see what works for you. Don't put the balls in the pocket because I think it's the abrasion of rubbing against the clothes more than anything else that will work. Now, if you've got lots and lots of balls, I suppose, lots of shiny squash balls, you could just put the squash balls in. If you're, again, if you're a coach, you could sort of collect them and then put them all in one time. But if you're like me, you just sort of, you know, you've only got a couple of balls that get shiny every now and again. In fact, at the time of this video, I haven't hit a squash ball for two years. So, you know, these are, these are really old anyway. Try it, see if it works for you, and, you know, we'll, we'll sort of see what happens. So that is the, the tip to do with squash balls. Put them in the washing machine, 30 degrees, with the rest of the clothes, the rest of your sports kit. The lower the temperature, I would suggest, is better. And they should come out very matte uh, and a little bit, um, I can't think of the word, but the opposite of slippery, a little bit uh, sticky. Maybe that's the right word. I love squash bags. A racky bag, for me, is the pinnacle of accessories i cannot tell you how much i love them i love all of the little details now this is a dunlop one i bought it online years ago um, they're probably even better now if you've got one of these and you need to travel to tournaments or you need to go anywhere they are so useful the straps on the back are absolutely fantastic got all of these pockets down the side you've got the main compartment where you're supposed to keep your rackets that's why it's got this um heat resistant or thermal lining to make sure that there's you know it doesn't get too hot inside now that's not the hack because just buying a racket bag you know is is not really a hack the problem with these bags well not so much the problem is that they're not cheap i mean you might be able to buy them second hand there are some for sale in in various like websites and, and services so getting one of these it's not particularly expensive but they're not really really cheap now if you need a bag to carry all of your squash kit the hack is one of these what's this you say philip what is it it's a bag from ikea now this bag cost me three euros fifty yes it doesn't have all of the different pockets yes it doesn't have the shoulder straps that are as supportive but it does have shoulder straps what does it have it has cheapness that's what a hack in this case is now i know that having all of these little whole uh, extra bags is really useful you've got some place for your, your maybe your wet clothes you've got some place for your shoes and some of the bags actually have like a little section for you to put your shoes in and that is pretty cool especially if you've got like smelly feet um and you've got all of these sort of side bags and yes but this was about 40 euros and that was quite cheap this is three pound fifty or three euros fifty so this is like a useful bag if you're going somewhere that you you're not really sure you know maybe is it safe or perhaps more importantly you don't want to damage your bag one of these now in the true tradition of a tv presenter i have one here that i have previously prepared now this one in my case uh, one other thing i want to tell you about this bag is that it's got a zip that goes all the way down the side as well which means opening it and getting stuff out is really easy now this one contains one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen this contains 16 rackets it's basically my my racket bag rackets to review and, and, and whatnot sorry about all the rustling it's got a shoe bag of course it is it's got a bag for my grips i'm not even sure what this is to be honest yeah bag for grips that i sort of keep all my grips in it's got my heart rate monitor you do have a heart rate monitor don't you because you should and then it's got a bag for balls now you can put another bag in for your your clothes you can put another bag in for your valuables so yes it doesn't have the panache the style the the image that a racket bag has but it can put everything that you need it in 
And if you are maybe a coach and you've got lots of rackets that you need to transport between you know clubs and things, this is the ideal bag. If you're a player who doesn't really know if they need a really big bag and wants to buy one of these, you can buy one. And then if you decide, well, I really, really think that I need a big bag, then you can get yourself a proper racket bag. So that's the bag hack, a cheap alternative to expensive, but very good racket bags that you can try and see if you use it. It's also a great bag for just storing stuff in. So if you do have lots of rackets or other kit, you can keep it somewhere. And that zip that goes down the side and the top is really helpful. So that was the racket bag hack. Back when I first started playing squash, which was quite possibly before you were born, white only were the clothes that you had to wear. You might have been allowed to wear dark shorts or a dark skirt, but you had to wear whites. Socks had to be white, t-shirts had to be white. And you just, oh, the ball would pass across it and you could see it. And if you had a dark t-shirt, you could lose sight of the ball. That was, I suppose that was the argument, I don't know. Or maybe because it was like the tennis and tennis you had to wear whites because that was the way it was done, I don't know. But anyway, nowadays, you can wear pretty much anything you want. I mean, unless it's, you know, pretty offensive to somebody. I'm not even going to pretend that I can suggest something like that. But unless somebody's got something that is literally disgusting, you can wear what you want. So why don't you? And by the power of video editing, I have now got a cycling top on. So what, you say, Philip? Why is this a hack? Well, it's a hack for two reasons. The first reason is that cycling tops have zips. Now, this one goes all the way down to the, to the you know, I'm not gonna do it, but it goes all the way down to the end. But at least all of them have got like one that comes sort of down here. Now, sometimes you're playing and just having a little bit of air around here can really feel quite quite nice. I mean, some people play in sort of vests, um, but I've always found that if my neck area is hot, then I'm hot, and I use the opposite in the winter. I make sure I've got one of these little buffs all of the time because it makes me feel better. So maybe this is just like a personal thing, I don't know. But I actually think that sometimes being able to adjust, maybe it's psychological, but maybe it does actually have an effect. But that's not the real reason that cycling tops are really good. The real reason other pockets. Da, da, da. I know. Not, I'm going to change the view in a second. But having pockets in the back, especially during the pandemic, especially if you're a coach, can be incredibly useful. You can keep your mask in there so that you can put it on and off depending on the context. You can keep a few extra balls in there. That can be really useful. You can keep uh, tissues in there if you're the kind of person who needs to blow their nose. Uh, or you can put your I, you know, your uh, protective goggles on there when you come off on and off court so that, that you're, not, you're not holding them. You can even, if you wanted to, put like a little bottle of gel. Or, I don't know. I mean, literally, you can put whatever you want. Put a bottle of water. You can put your phone, uh, uh, your tablet. I don't care whatever you want to put in there. But sometimes having those pockets at the back is a lot easier than having the pockets in the shorts. And if you're a lady and you wear skirts, I don't know if those skirts have got pockets. I don't know, that's a question for you. Do skirts have pockets for like playing sport? I don't think so. So if you're a guy or if you wear shorts and you keep your some extra balls in here or something, it's often quite tight, whereas at the back, it doesn't matter. Now you might say to me, but Philip, running around on a squash court with stuff in your back is, is not convenient. Yes, of course it's not. And I'm joking about the tablet and the phone. Of course I was. But a few tissues and another ball and, you know, the mask, that's not going to be too much trouble. So it's like a combination. You've got a, a, some pretty funky designs. This is a very basic one. And I'm sure that you can go to some, you know, cycling shops and get some absolutely outrageous ones. So you can have a little bit of fun with that. Um, it might prove useful. I mean, I... I haven't worn them when I've coaching because I didn't think about it and I don't do any coaching at the moment. So, but if I were coaching, next time I go on court, I might wear these because having those pockets would be really good. And I quite like the idea of being able to, to open them. There's, there's no restriction on the shoulders or anything like that. So it doesn't make any difference. So, you know, that's my, that's my hack about the t-shirts. 
Think outside of the squash court. The phrase in English is think outside the box, but think outside the squash court. What other types of t-shirts might be sort of suitable? And this was what I thought of and you know, I don't know, try it, let me know. So those were my three squash equipment hacks. Now, if you like them, please let me know in the comments. But more importantly, if you've got some hacks that you think other viewers would like, let me know either in the comments or emailing me. And if I get another three that I think, can't guarantee that I like your hacks, but if I get another three that I think are really useful for viewers, I'll make a second video. And of course, I'll credit you uh, in the comments or in the video itself, depending on what you want, telling you about that. Um, down here is a subscription button. If and only if you think my content is useful, please consider subscribing. This is a collection of videos that are just a random collection. Check them out. And down here is a video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.